All right, what's up, guys? This is the Fury Warrior guide that I've come up with. Um, it's going to be... This one will be just for M+, for now. I'll make a uh, raid one after. I think a lot of the things might overlap. You know, it might be too long of a video to do both in one. So we'll just do M+, here. But um, this will start with the talents. Basically... Um, there's only like a couple talents that you can honestly swap around. You mainly are going, if you're going full damage and say it's fortified weak, this is what your talents are going to look like. The main things, um, the important things is Titanic Rage, uh, makes your Odin Sphere do more damage, gives you free whirlwind and enrages you, which are all good things to have when you're just constantly pulling, you know, large packs. Doing big AoE damage, you know, boss damage is less important. Um, this one's still, even on Fortified, it's arguable. You could take um, Dancing Blades because two two of these things in this talent are, are, you know, obtainable from other abilities. Like Enrage is obtainable from Bloodthirst. Whirlwind is obviously you can get four stacks from just casting Whirlwind. And then the 10% damage of Odin's Fury is, it's good to have, but um, that's mainly the only thing that you can't get from other sources. But like I said, on Fortified Weeks, I, I take this talent, so it makes it just makes sense. Odin's Fury is big for AoE damage, so increasing your AoE damage on a Fortified Week makes a lot of sense. Uh, the other thing is, the Slaughtering Strikes procs off Annihilator, since we don't have Raging Blow. Um, but it, it just gives you a bit more damage for AoE as well. You're cleaving your rampages. Uh, it's a consistent damage. But um, even on Fortified Weeks, you can drop that for Blood Craze. Um, reason why, it's, it's, it's mostly a single target talent. But it also interacts with your, your tier piece. So you basically get cooldown reduction every time you crit with Bloodthirst, right? So that, paired with Blood Craze, you're getting more crits on Bloodthirst much more often, which then just in turn turns into more Odin's Fury casts, which means more AoE damage. So this is still takeable on Fortified Weeks, for sure. Like, don't, don't think it's just for single target. And then on the, the class tree, this is where things get a little different where DPS is something to consider dropping um, on high higher keys if you're pushing high keys I think you're you should always be taking endurance training especially on tyrannical weeks like I don't know maybe when we're really geared and we're fully geared end of the season or towards the end of the season you know you don't need or you don't need as much survivability, I guess. Who knows? Um, you could maybe drop this on Fortified Weeks. But I think, at least for now, and especially on Tyrannical Weeks, this is required. Um, and you could drop this, another point in Curl Strikes, for Shockwave on certain Fortified Weeks or even Tyrannical Weeks. In specific dungeons where you need AoE stops. But if you have other players or other classes in your team comp that can do the AoE stops and you might not need Shockwave. Like, I know I I get a lot of use in Shockwave out of Altal Dazar, um, Black Rick Hold. You get it out of, sometimes you get it out of Throne of the Tides in that last, like, gauntlet hallway. It's pretty good. Um, so, Shockwave, it's situational. You know, depending on your team comp, like how many AoE stops you have available, and then also the dungeon. So, but if you don't need it, just put it in Cruel Strikes, or you could even put it into Wrecking Throw. Sometimes you might need this on Galakron's Fall. I wanted to try that actually on the last boss. It might be useful. You can even take Intimidating Shout for more AoE stops um, instead of this, but I think you would just take Shockwave over Intimidating Shout, to be honest. You could take Second Wind, but sometimes it's not always going to be active. 
Um, this is more consistent healing. You can take pain and gain. If you need instant healing, you know, and certain high keys where you're taking very quick damage and, you know, your healer might not be able to spot heal you quick enough, you can take bitter immunity. It's a three minute cooldown though, so it's a long, but I would say mostly just settled, settle with this, you know, two points in curl strikes, one point there, one point there, or this. This is fortified. And then this would be uh, for tyrannical weeks. And then, like I said, this these two talents are basically fortified weeks, tyrannical weeks. All right, so moving on with the gear, though. I would say um, your best, starting with the trinkets, I guess we could start. Your your best trinkets are going to be, for single target especially, uh, Singut brand. And uh, the last trinket on... Let's see, fire rack. Oh, wrong dungeon. So last trinket on fire rack. The augury is going to be your best in slot trinket for fury. We are critting pretty often, so this should be able to proc very often. Especially if you use, if you even go sim this on your character right now, I'm sure it'll be the highest simming trinket for you if you're playing fury. It's just going to be our best trinket. Um, other trinkets that you can use for dungeons. This is going to be very strong. This is our one and a half minute CD. So you'll have it for every rock or every recklessness and avatar. Um, Signet brand. It is nice to have, but it is questionable to use on dungeons. Sometimes if you're not chain pulling, this can be pretty useless or not useless, but very, uh, <laughs> the value goes down a lot if you're not chain pulling, especially on like, I had a, I had used this on Throne of the Tides, right? You know, you finish a boss on one of the wings and then you've got to run all the way back. No mobs, nothing. There's nothing to fight. So you just drop all your stacks and then you're back at zero stacks. And this thing just takes a while to ramp up sometimes. So this trinket's not great for Mythic Plus. So I would say you could you could run this Might of the Ocean. You could even run a Mirror if you have a Mirror of the Fracture tomorrow. So that can be pretty strong depending on what your highest stat. Try to have Merc or <laughs> Verse or Mastery as your highest stat. Those will be good for you. Um, yeah, I would say Might of the Ocean and then Augury is probably what I would run uh, at the end of this. You know, when I get the Augury, obviously. Um, like I said. Depending on how you pull and what dungeons you are, you could run Signet and Augury. Um, but having an on-use trinket for Fury, I feel like is really nice. Especially Might of the Ocean, one and a half minute CD. So probably this and Augury when you when you do get this trinket. You know, you might even get it on Heroic or Normal. It should still be pretty strong because it can be upgraded to pretty high item level. Um, but in terms of stats overall... Uh, you do want to go for Mastery Verse much more this season than last season. Because um, usually Fury's stats are just Haste Mastery, right? Um, and it's not saying that Haste isn't good for Fury Warrior. It's just that with this new tier set and build, um, Verse and Mastery just scale way better. Uh, especially, like, like I said, Go sim it on your characters, like sim different gear with Verse Mastery compared to Haste Mastery. Eventually, Haste just doesn't scale as well for us anymore. Um, like I said, it's not a bad stat, but I think partially, honestly, um, you know, I don't do all the, you know, sim craft stuff. I just sim my character and everything, but I think most of it would come down to, you know, Haste less value because you don't have a hinger management, so less... Uh, haste needed to get that cooldown reduction, um, but you still need haste. It's still a good stat. Don't don't uh don't take me as saying it's bad, but um, verse and mastery are very good. But and even even the fact that verse is scaling well for DPS, it's also really nice to have in keys. Like you you can be <laughs> you can be one of the tankiest classes in the game. Like it's it is very difficult to die as a fury warrior. When you have endurance training and just a ton of versatility. Plus you have war paint, which is almost permanent 10% damage reduction. Um, 
You've got two swords, two two-handed weapons. So you have extra, way more stamina than the average class. So that plus endurance training. You're a plate class. You can tank melees a little bit more than someone else. Um, but yeah, like I said, having the verse is really good. It scales well in DPS and it's good DR. So it's very nice to have. Um, going on to embellishments. Uh, right now, the risk guarded companionships definitely are strongest. Um, like I said, I mean it's good because verse scales well, but um, uh, as and the and the other one, right now we have shadow flame patch. I think that towards the end of the season, when everyone has more uh, sockets in their gear and everything, I feel like lariat will be. Uh, it, I mean, it's, it comes on the semi your character if it's better for you or not. But Lariat can definitely come out to be uh, the stronger embellishment than Shadowflame Patch. Because Shadowflame Patch did get nerfed, I think, I believe it was 33% at the beginning of the season on its damage. And you take more damage now from the stack. So, I mean, right now, Risk Art of Companionship, uh, almost pretty much guaranteed craft right now. Uh, for embellishments at least. You could, um, once you get to your two embellishments, you could craft the Verse Mastery Ring. Um, I haven't done that yet. I'm planning on doing it this week or upgrading some of my Myth Track gear. Uh, but you can gra craft one of these at Verse Mastery. If you don't have a weapon, you could also craft a weapon. Um, if you don't have a one, one from Dungeons at this point, uh, you definitely would want a weapon. Weapons are massive for warriors, so... You know, most of your damage comes from just melees, right? So, it's it's pretty good to have a strong weapon. So, that's definitely very important. Another big thing to pay attention to is your defensives, right? Um, like I said, we are one of the tankiest classes in the game in terms of M, M plus at least. I think it overall we're one of the tankiest classes. Um. You know, paired with your versatility, when you have Enraged Regen, this gives you 30% damage reduction, and you also heal 20% additional health from Bloodthirst. So, you're restoring 23% of your HP each Bloodthirst, which is, which if you're pressing it, you know, if you're swapping between GCDs, that's every 2.3 seconds here for me, is 23% of your health you're healing. So... You can very easily heal yourself through a lot of damage, incoming damage that you're taking. Um, uh, and then, you know, the value of Spell Reflect is very good this season, I'd say. I'm not sure if I could say it's as good as last season, but it's definitely, it's definitely still very strong. So, without even having to Spell Reflect anything, you get a 20% DR to magic damage. And a lot of AoE damage in dungeons is magic damage. So you can use this on, a, you know, on most AoE damage from bosses or, you know, mobs or anything. And it's probably going to DR for you. Um, like this, this is very useful regardless of if you're spell reflecting or not. You know, going into, I can, I think in another video I could, most likely go into a more in-depth spell reflect video. So, yeah. Warrior defensives, pretty pretty useful. We've got a lot. You know, impending victory, self-heal, 30%. It's massive. Rallying Cry got nerfed. It's pretty good party utility still, though. We I use it a lot in keys. It can help. So don't count it out. Even though it's nerfed, it's still useful. But it's not as good as it used to be. But spell reflect, massive value in rage regen insane value now going on to rotation Let's see if i can do this here first try um open with recklessness you want to go you want to get your rolling stacks as well so it's nice to have that before um if you can get it on like a mob before you go into a pull try that but you might just have to wreck then whirlwind um so we'll, we'll i'll see if i can do this here without messing it up uh <laughs> basically open with wreck you want to get your Rampage so you're enraged, and then you open with Odin's Fury, get your Bloodthirst, then your Rampage, Bloodthirst, and then you'll open up with Odin's Fury again and get your Whirlwind Stacks again. So basically, um, I also have it bound. I have this macroed with my 
trinket, by the way, my unused trinket, so it lines up perfectly with Rick. Um, so you basically do that, get my whirlwind stacks, Odin's Fury, Bloodthirst, Dragon's Roar. Then we do that, let's whirlwind again, open up with Avatar, and then we just rim rinse and peep from there. You can see on the top right near my DPS meter, that's where my tracker is. So you basically just rinse and repeat this over and over, hit your fillers, go from there. And sometimes you have dead time like that. Um, if you're opening with uh, Lust on pole though, it's going to be okay. So you can go through with this. It's pretty, pretty uh, straightforward rotation. You just hit your filler. It's all priority. Rampage and Bloodthirst are your highest priority. Everything else is filler. Make sure you always have your Roman stacks up and you're good to go. And Odin's Fury when you can. A uh, small little note. I would, if you have Odin's Fury come up mid pull, always cast Rampage first. That way you know you're guaranteed that you're enraged. And then you can also get an extra Bloodthirst out before the Avatar runs out. It's pretty nice to have. Um, that, that opener is actually the same for single target. Um, there's, you know, an ar argument you can make to delay casting Avatar after Odin's Fury after 10 seconds. So you have maximum uptime on bl Dancing Blades, but, um, I don't actually do that. I'm not sure if it's correct or not. Um, like I said, I'm not, you know, I'm not deep into the Sims or nothing, but what I usually do is just simplify it. Just send everything early. You're gonna miss out on you know some time on Dancing Blades uptime, but it's basically the same opener for if you're going into a dungeon boss, right? Let's say you're just going into a dungeon boss. It's, it's same opener, you know. Open up with that Odin's Fury. Let's do Bloodthirst, Dragon's Roar, Bloodthirst, Avatar, Rampage, Bloodthirst, Rampage, Bloodthirst, Rampage, Bloodthirst. And do some filler if you're not having enough rage. And, you know, rinse and, rinse and repeat from there. So, yeah, that's basically all that. All you got there. Now, like I said, that's, uh, that's basically the rotation. If you are running Titanic Rage, the only difference in the opener is that you do not have to cast Rampage after Recklessness. Because the reason you're casting Rampage after Recklessness is for Enrage uptime. You want Enrage before you cast Odin's Fury, so Odin's Fury is getting your Mastery damage bonus. Because your Mastery is your damage while Enraged. It's bonus damage while Enraged, that's why it's so valuable. Because you're Enraged almost the entirety of a dungeon, the entirety of an encounter, you're Enraged. You're going to be Enraged. Um, so that's why you cast Rampage page before, but if you have Titanic Rage, what you can actually do is macro Odin's Fury and Recklessness together. So that way, um, you don't have to worry about extra GCDs in your opener. You just go in, you open up, you get that four stacks of Whirlwind, you get, and you get the Enrage on pull, and then you just slam your Rampage, then Bloodthirst, Rampage, Bloodthirst, and then you Whirlwind, and then you, you'll cast your Avatar. And since Avatar casts Odin's Fury, you are also getting four extra free stacks, right? So I can even show you that here. So if, say, Fortified Week, you're running with this, you basically just go in and look at that. Already have my four Roman stacks. So we do that. And then we get another free four Roman stacks from casting uh, Avatar, and then boom. And then you just rinse and repeat the same rotation there. So... Yeah, so like I said, the only thing that this changes is the opener. Um, just slightly, just a few extra GCDs, and then you're good to go. So yeah, this is basically everything I wanted to cover. Um, it's all, all the notes I had for Fury Warrior Guide here on Mythic Plus. Um, let me know if there's anything that you think I missed, or any questions you have, any important questions you have. I can try to answer them the best I can. Just, you know, comment, leave a comment, let me know any questions you got. Um, I will try to do a Fury Warrior raid guide soon as well. Um, I can get in, I can work on an Arms Warrior Mythic Plus and raid guide if people want that as well. Um, I can do that. And another one would be, like I said, a Spell Reflect guide. You know, more of a quick rundown of, you know, what Spell Reflects are useful in dungeons and, you know, which ones, which ones are 
important to look out for, how to do them, etc. So let me know if you want that. I can work on that as well. Um, so just, just like I said, comment. Leave a comment if there's anything you think I missed or anything you want to know, any questions you have. Um, another final important note is on gear. You know, the trinkets are easy to follow. Um, weapons, you know, enchants, these are also something to take an important look at. Um, basically, a lot of gearing comes down to simming your character. And I usually always sim my character for the single target because, you know, rating is where you basically, you know, focus your gear on first, right? Raiding, if you're a raider. So, I would say always focus on simming your gear first. Find out what stats, stat weights are going to best balance your character. Um, but, you know, I did give a quick rundown of what gear and stats are important. But always sim your character. That is very important to do. Um, you get simulation craft. And that should help you out find out what stats are best for you and what pieces of gear might be better than others at that, you know, point in time. Uh, but like I said, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions you have, leave a comment. Let me know. Uh, I'll try to get those other guides out when I can, um, especially if you guys want those. Let me know if you do want a Fury raid guide and an Arms Warrior guide for Mythic Plus and raid as well. Uh, just let me know. I can get those done. And um, like I said, I hope you enjoy. Have a good day. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.